Hey everyone and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb. Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, well, this has been an interesting kind of end to the 2020 Nebraska saga for this year. I mean, definitely a weird one to say the least when it came to the Rutgers win and then the whole saga of are we going to have a bowl game or not? And that kind of came to an end. We're going to talk all about that in this video. The title of this video, though, as you guys saw from the beginning, is, is how hot is Scott Frost's seat? We're going to talk about some situations where he you know, could potentially get fired. But we normally what we do is a big picture kind of conversation at the end of the year. We do basically like a state of the union type situation. We are in that time of the year. And uh, we're going to be talking about the state of the program. So with that said, Kale, first of all, we got to ask, how you doing? What are your thoughts? Where you at with this? You know, I'm doing good. Merry Christmas to everybody and happy new yes. year. Hope it's been a good one. Merry Christmas. Had some time with your family. Apparently our team really wanted that. So I'm glad we got to do that, I guess. <laughs> Um, <laughs> nice, <laughs> but you know, uh, I'm doing okay. The Rutgers game, it left a lot to be desired for me. Just yes. the same things that have happened this entire season happened again. And it almost cost us versus Rutgers. At least this time we got the dub though. I, I mean, my, I mean, I guess earlier in the year that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I don't know. It's Rutgers, so it doesn't it doesn't really count. It's just it's just Rutgers, you know. I feel like we played the same game the last well pretty much the whole season. I mean, yeah, this, this it's was just a the very level of competition changes. And uh we've played just as sloppy, just as poor, still the same amount of turnovers. And you know, Mr. I just, just want to pull my hair out every time I watch it, but hey, we got the <laughs> win this time because we played Rutgers. So, you know, that's nice, I guess. Yeah, um, wow. Coming in real negative today. I, oh, I'm sorry. It's my eyes. We got the win, all right? It, it was much needed for Nebraska, okay? We're going to talk a lot about today. So what we're doing today, I'll cut off Caleb's negativity. <laughs> what, we, what we're doing today is we're going to be going through basically both sides of the ball. We're going to be going through all the position groups on both sides of the ball. And what we're going to kind of do is kind of like a a, a check. We're going we're gonna, to, it's like an injury check. It's like taking your car to Jiffy Loop. <laughs> what we're doing is we're taking Nebraska to Jiffy Loop here. And we're going to do a little checkup on the team, the position groups, and kind of where we're at. We're going to be, is the progress acceptable or is it not acceptable? And that's what we're doing today. So, and then after that, we're going to go through a little bit more talk of Scott Frost and what we need to do in the upcoming 12 months to get this program in the dynasty form. Or admirable for <laughs> all of those. Exactly. Bell Schnickel says. I can get behind that. Amen. And next week, be on the lookout for this, by the way. Be on the lookout for our video next week because we're going to be doing, like we did last year, we did a little uh, tier ranking of the pros. We gave out some corny awards. The second annual the corny awards. And we're doing the second annual corny yes. awards next week. So be on the lookout for that. We're ranking all the players. So with that said, let's get right into, this vi let's get right into the main topic of this video, which is these uh, position groups. So with that said, Caleb, let's start off with the juiciest one of them all. Let's start off with the quarterbacks and talk about uh, some of these things. So we're going to go through some of the pros and the really cons of the quarterback group. Oh, it's pretty juicy. And uh, talk about, you know, the progress. Caleb, are you happy with the development of the quarterbacks and the progress that we've seen from the beginning of Frost? Where are you at with the quarterbacks, man? All right, well, let's start off with some positives. <laughs> I, think, I think we could all use it this year in 2020. Let's, so let's start with the positives. Add it into 2021, yeah. So, you know, Scott okay. Frost has been very good at recruiting – you know, on paper, you know, coming in highly, you know, or pretty highly touted quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, they have talent. a lot of interest, a lot of buzz coming in. You know, Martinez had a lot of buzz. McCaffrey obviously had a lot of buzz. Smothers has Sm had buzz. Smothers has. He, again, I, I've said it multiple times, quietest four-star to ever enter Nebraska yeah, dude. because of the, just the, the excitement in the, the Martinez-McCaffrey race of this last year. But, you know, yeah. and, you know, this year we have a nice Nebraska quarterback coming in. Um, just again, so we've done a good job at getting uh, nice quarterbacks. We know we need them yeah. to win. So I'd say that's that's a big positive is, you know, <laughs> we're able to to snag some some talent at the quarterback spot. We've seen the flashes that these guys of the talent throughout the time. We talked a lot about that. From Adrian, from Luke, we've seen it from both of those players at points in their careers for sure. I mean, like last year, at least Frost was being honest and he talked about, you know, age, we're going to go as far as Adrian takes us. And unfortunately, it just, it, we didn't go that far. And so that's just the, you know, the biggest unfortunate thing of the situation. I mean, obviously, I think for, well, I think I can speak for both of us when I don't, I don't think 
And for most Husker fans, I don't think anyone can be happy with the progress we've seen at the quarterback position at this point. I mean, that'd be pretty hard to justify to be truly happy with it. Why did we see bigger flashes of talent from Luke and from Adrian in their freshman years than we did in their sophomore and now junior years for Adrian? That is a question to be had. You know, where is that development supposed to be at this point? We saw with Frost in his in his second and third years with other quarterbacks he's had the, the massive jumps and people were pretty excited. I mean, that's why Adrian was such so hyped going into last season was the, the potential Heisman jump going into a sophomore year under Scott Frost, like what Mariota had. And that was not the case, obviously. And uh, it's been a big time question. And again, in the Rutgers game, I mean, Adrian, you know, he made some big time mistakes in that game. And luckily our defense was a, was the definition of Ben not break and made some big time stands and stops, but hand out the, the football game. like Christmas gifts, man. Here you go. Here you go. Rutgers. <laughs> yeah, he was Merry, giving some early Merry presents Cr- to Rutgers. Merry Christmas. Oh no. Merry Christmas. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a uh, Adrian was doing his best Santa Claus impression, but yeah, like that was a tough one to say the least. And uh, one of Adrian, I mean, that is debatably Adrian's worst performance of his career in, in the majority of that. He had 390 game. yards, Josh. Yeah, but when it came to the mistakes he was making, again, you can 390. Oh, I know. I don't want to hear it. Public opinion. I, I understand. The turnovers at the end of the day is what's been kicking us in, in the butt for the past three years. Well, really, past six years. Uh, and Adrian has had a real problem with fumbling. He's had a problem with decision making since the Ohio State game last year. And it came back again against a, a sub a subpar is nice a nice way to put it. For Rutgers, a subpar team there, and that's just a big time worry. And we haven't seen the progression, mm, the decision making, and the 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 speed and in, in the speed of him going through progression is the decision making overall with how he plays, the velocity and how he throws. Honestly, may have gone down in the consistency and the velocity that he throws in the past year. There's been a lot of question marks. I've been ranting for a while now, but uh, I yeah, don't know. I mean, I definitely say most of that. For, in my mind, this is the most worrying thing about Scott Frost. I mean, I think right. everybody had circled, you know, with Scott Frost coming here. We're finally here, we're, gonna be fine. We're gonna have good quarterbacks finally. Yeah. You know, our quarterback play is gonna be good. It's it hasn't been great, you know, probably the last since Eric Crouch, our quarterbacks have not been great. Uh right. you know. There's been there's been moments, but yeah. Yeah, there's been moments on a Again, consistent basis has not n- been not been good. And you could also honestly argue, you know, to, I mean Tommy Armstrong, he did have a pretty good junior year. But you know right. his freshman you year. Had... For his freshman year was his most exciting. And citing right. Taylor's freshman year was most exciting. Yep. Ad- Adrian's freshman year was most exciting. And now probably Luke's freshman year was most exciting. And then it, it, the development just doesn't happen. It seems definitely to be uh, a big problem that's just been perpetual at this point. And yeah, just it just we I haven't seen uh, any good enough progression out of that position, and it feels yeah, almost like it's regressed. Last year, we had the excuse of the offensive line. This year, I mean, it was an improved offensive line. By no means great, but definitely improved enough for the quarterbacks to make some plays. I mean, last year, we even saw, though, in an open pocket, Pro Football Focus ranked Adrian Martinez 127th out of 128 in an open pocket. So, yeah, and, and I, def- year, I definitely I think say oof. Face off eye Adrian's. test, I don't know if it was much better than that, especially if, if you count balls past five yards down the line of scrimmage or past line of scrimmage it definitely wasn't great so i mean i feel like we could rant about the quarterbacks all day and i'm sure we'll talk more about them later when we're talking about scott frost as a whole but like definitely overall i think we have a consensus there it is uh not acceptable progress so far on the development of quarterbacks in the state of the quarterback situation so let's move on to the running backs a very interesting conversation to have here because you've talked about some of the talent that we've had and we definitely have had some talent there at the running back situation and we had divine zigbo there and he broke out under Frost in his first year. Then you had Mo Washington, who was Debatable. there, and Mo Washington, you know, struggled and then got or was great, then got kicked off because of all the off the field issues. And then we had Dedrick Mills come in, had a really good year last year, all things considered. And Wandale, of course, who's been really, really good as well. So we've had the talent there as well. We had seen some of those guys behind him, like Tompkins and all those guys back behind them, and Sevion Morrison. We've been excited about seeing him at some point. Hopefully next year we'll see him. And even Scott, the thirds look good as well. So Overall, lots of talent. Thoughts on the running backs as a whole? Where are you at them? Um, I'd say, you know, yeah, exactly. I think Ozigbo has obviously been probably our best running back. Wandell's kind of a hybrid. Definitely not his natural position, but it's very good at it. Uh, right. I'd say, you know, 
obviously on the positive, we can get yards on the ground with our running backs in spite of sometimes a bad offensive line. They're definitely talented. Uh, I'd say my own, my my biggest knock, especially when you talk about you know like Ramirez Johnson, Ronald Tompkins, uh, even Wandale and uh, and Diedrich is that their ability to be, stay healthy has has not been there for our no. running backs, and I think yeah, that's a, that's has definitely been a red flag. Uh, all of them have had their issues with it, except for uh, Divine again, who we knew was special from his he freshman year, and yeah. he he won us our last bowl game that we won, uh, the good old Foster Farms Bowl. So, I mean, they had that, that's the last bowl game we won, guys. So, yeah, strap in. But, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, when he ran for just an absolute mile on UCLA, and uh, we won that game. So, right. uh, Ramirez look, has looked good, but, again, can't stay healthy. Yeah. Um, and so then Scott the Third's kind of been the, the third stringer behind Wandale and Diedrich at this point. Who's looked, you know, again, pretty yeah. okay, and Diedrich's looked good. Uh, but again, there was but so what, much hype about Sevion, and we never even got a chance to see him. Which yeah, sucks because we 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 have to get him healthy, which we've heard quite a bit this season. Again, so <laughs> it's definitely that's a danger spot. You know, running backs. Yeah. That's, that's a huge. I mean, you know, it's a game of attrition, especially for that running back position. And you need, and that's so important for them to stay healthy. And obviously, they're they're yeah. they're going to be taking a lot of hits at, as a running back. So they definitely need to figure that out if they're going to be successful. So I don't feel great about it, especially because what if. Our bet running backs, like you know, we we used other things besides Wandale, but unless Wandale was out on the field, uh, aside from you take away that Rutgers game, unless Wandale right. was there, our, our our running game didn't look good at all. Right. So Which, yeah, then that's also a testament to our next group, the offensive line. So there are a lot of things to go over here with the offensive line, things to consider. Of course, the age is something that always get brought up. That you know, the youth of the offensive line. I had a dollar for every time I heard the age excuse under Scott Frost. (laughs) Right. Obviously, High Mace, he opted out of that last game against Rutgers. We got to see some of the young guns come in and make a lot of plays. And they overall looked pretty good. Again, that is against Rutgers, which, you know, is always a little asterisk in a season like this. But Rutgers has looked better than the Rutgers we've seen of the past few years this season overall. So there are pros and cons to that as a whole. But, um... Overall, I mean, I, I think we saw improvement from last year to this year, but there was, Definitely. you know, a massive issue last year with the offensive line, of course. What? And uh, it, it was disgusting. And so overall, I mean, like, you know, really, it feels like our offensive line this year should have been what our offensive line could have, should have been last year. Agreed. You know? Yeah. Um. So that that's a little disappointing overall. Thoughts on the offensive line? I'd say the biggest frustration because yes we have seen them get better it's not hard again when it was last year uh and we get the the guys True. are young and it, it is offensive line is uniquely tough because they, they especially need to be older just because it's yeah. so hard to mesh and glue with each other and it is a very difficult position because you get everything thrown at you right um you know you're when you're protecting the quarterback and um and you really need to know your your plays and the plays of the people next to you and yeah. you, you got to be able to trust one. It's it's a tough thing. Obviously, footwork you got to be big enough. The Big Ten's a very big, strong league, uh, and, and all that jazz. Um, I'd say the big, sure. the biggest frustration with me is why did it take a year and a half for us to be able to specifically snap the ball? Uh, right. I know. And again, and again you hear these switch, he switch, he switch positions. He's young. He switch. Okay, but it, that, that's the basic. That's his job is to snap football. And that's, that's like, you you have to be able to get into the quarterback's hands. And I I mean, yeah, it's it's an understandable, like counter argument. I mean, but I I, I hear that. I hear that for the first half of last year, but not, not, not after a full off season uh, as you know, again, as the offensive lineman and he's only been playing for this position for two years. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then switch to somebody else. For goodness sake, then it, it, if this is still a problem, because it Come was on, man, he's athletic. It, though. It, it, it was losing us games, so so you can't have it both ways. You can't just say, "Well, he's athletic, so we need him." Oh, but he's young, so there's that doesn't that argument doesn't work. So I mean, yeah, it, Again, when we did I mean, figure you have it to out, understand it, we that did, he is young. Sure, but like sure, but but we have to figure it out. You, you're not gonna win sure. games if you can't figure out. I mean, and as he, a coaching staff, your job is to build a, a, to build a depth chart. At the positions that you need, talent. and if and if and that's so, the case again, recruit another, then recruit another center, and then then it's another problem. So I'd say right, that yeah. that's the biggest frustration. I get he's young, 
but you have to be able to snap the ball to get the plays going because it killed so many plays because so many plays are frost. Oh, I mean, yeah, there are was timing. moments even this year where it was terrible. Yeah. So, you know, and you can count – if that's four or five plays a game, I mean, you know, we're talking 10, 15% right. of your plays. And those are just the basics, you know. And that's that's killing you. So i say that that – is then if it's not the offensive lineman's problem, then it is a coaching problem because it's just, and if it's not that, then it's a recruiting problem, which goes yeah. back to a coaching problem. And so it, sure. it's, it, you know, besides the fact that sure, yes, other uh, other positions did get better, but it, right. it took you my, two seasons to figure out how to snap a football. Yeah. On paper, we should have been out. significantly better this year on the offensive line, which we, I, I mean, basically from rankings, what we've seen, we've gone from like a, a hundredth ish rank offensive line to like a mid fifties ish offensive line somewhere in there. I'm um, obviously depending on where you're looking for rankings at this point. Um, they did have their two best games here at the end of the year, probably against Purdue and Rutgers, which, you know, we ended up winning. Um, the, the biggest issue is that last year we said that same thing though. At the end of the year, they're like, wow, the offensive line starting to find their groove against Wisconsin, against Iowa. And like they looked pretty good in those and games. And then it just then, falls like, right back to square one. And then yeah, at the beginning of this year, it didn't look like there was any improvement from uh, before those games the year before. So that was a big question for me. It was like, why at the beginning of this year do we feel like we're literally worse than we were against Wisconsin last year? I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, and like was definitely a big question mark. And in the passing or in the pass protection, I don't feel like we'd made that many steps forward. It was more in the run blocking that I felt more confident in us this year than really anything. I guess my thought is, is that I'm content with the progress from last season to this season. Agreed. But I'm not content with the progress that we're in year three and this is the offensive line at this point. That's really, so that's overall, really fair. I, I would say, no, I'm not happy with the progress because in looking at it as a year three perspective, our offensive line should be better than it is right now. That's just, that's a fact. Yeah. So overall, I would say no, but from last year to this year, I would say, yeah, probably. Yeah, but it's, that should be <laughs> obvious because it was painful last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's move on to the wide receivers now. This is an interesting one considering the talent, the the pe the players that we have there. Mm. Um. Yeah, so we had a super great, great re recruiting class coming in. Right. Obviously, yeah. you know, Omar Manning didn't play in that, but still – with but even with Betts, him not playing, I'm happy with you it. You know, Betts, Fleming, who's now left. Again, from, from last year to this year, it, it's, oh, wow. it was still underwhelming, and we didn't utilize them well. I think that's probably a big con yeah. for us with the receiving is the wide receivers is uh, how we've decided to utilize this group in our – I mean, obviously, we're terrified to throw the ball downfield. <laughs> um, and, what? And that, we didn't even mention that. We didn't even mention that in our quarter – barely mentioned that in our quarterback talk. That's just a big question mark for us is, like, how we use these players, like, considering how Wandale was used in the first half of the year, mostly as a wide receiver and was only seeing like five touches a game at most. Yeah. And then it took us a long time to get to a point where we we're giving him 10. I mean, Xavier, we didn't even use him in those end arounds and those sweeps up until like the middle of the year. And like, it was just sad. It was just he's weird, fast, fast. Right. And it was just weird. Like how we utilize these guys early on. I mean, overall I'm like, I'm happy with the talent and the receiving core talent. Like, for again, sure. It's so young, and we didn't do a good job of getting that talent early. Like, Frost should have got this talent his freshman, like, his first year. Like, these guys shouldn't all be freshmen right now. <laughs> That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, exactly. And, like, and, yeah, uh, it's it's year three. Where did your two other recruiting the classes years go? Yeah, where'd they go? Yeah, I yeah. agreed. I mean, Cade, I mean, again, just frustrating. You know, Cade Warner's our captain, and that dude, what, caught three balls for us? You know, yeah, and, and yeah. he's... And I like he's, Cade as much as it's And sick. he's eating up. Times. He's eating up. <laughs> practice time for yeah. our other guys and then we see that like that 87 kid who got the snap at the goal line last game a wide receiver i've never heard of before and i'm like oh yeah, th yeah this, that was wild. this isn't the talent and he's taking up snaps i think that's the frustrating thing is we can't we weren't able to decipher who the talented wide receivers were and we we had scott frost even talk about it this year it's like how can yeah. you're watching their practice every single day you've watched all of their tape recruiting you're watching way more than we, we, can we watch can't and we all we got is the game and you can't tell us who's the best wide receivers that's an issue, and, and you know, and and then you're not, and also you're not again like Josh said, you're not developing the older guys, like the, right. I mean, why, we, why, we why talked about why this a lot. Freshmen? Is, I mean, I get that they're good, that, right? But, we talked a lot about this a lot, and we'll talk more about this too. I imagine as well is just how Frost is so quick to trust the veterans versus you know allowing the the younger guys to get their spots. 
and get some reps in. And I mean, I get it to an extent, but at the same time, we got to make plays and we got to find the talent on this field because we don't have enough of it out there right now. So Cade Warner I can't mean, catch with, open touchdowns. Right. Overall with the wide receivers, I would say, again, we're in year three. I mean, I, I would have to say I'm not happy with it, with it right now. By the end of next year, could I be happy with it yes. depending on how these guys turn out? Yes, for sure. But right now, I can't possibly say i'm happy and, and that, uh, we heard so much blame on their route running and not getting open as well for the past couple of years and you know i i hear this blame and you know so so that obviously means that if they're not happy with the development how could we be so yeah yeah i would say so too so last one on the offensive side the tight ends here i think is pretty straightforward yes. we don't have to spend too much time on this i think confetti. we're all very happy confetti the confetti the, man the, the, the highlight of the offense sean beckton you get a ends, gold man. star my guy I mean, specifically, Austin Allen has been a massive surprise, I think, for mm. everyone. Every Husker fan, I mean, us, especially us included. Insert the third uh, and 22 catch here. Right. Holy moly. But, like, he's made some awesome plays this year. He's been great. Overall, the blocking was, you know, I think inconsistent early on. It got better as time time went on. And I think, well, I, I think that's the area blocker. where I feel like we've gotten oh, better. There's some great highlights Yeah, in there. and so Austin Allen's been great. And, and that was even with Jack Stoll getting hurt and missing time this season. And so overall, I mean, we recruited Thomas Fedone. He's coming in next year as well. So it's like overall a lot of positives for the tight ends. And you got to be happy with the development of this squad. Yeah, I mean, I think easily uh, on the offensive side, the most exciting. I mean, tight ends have been so underutilized, uh, you know, this whole time. And they yeah. are most they were most reliable targets. They looked great. And my only thing was like, you know, I could have seen Austin Allen catch the ball five more times. Uh because he, he did it so well. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, 100%. I think we can leave it there for the tight end. So let's move on to the defense now. Some interesting stuff here. Um, we'll start the linebacking core with, with what we saw with this team, with this group. I mean, just to lead it off, I feel like I'm happy enough with the development of the linebacking core. Agreed. Like, I was really frustrated at points in, in the past two years with the linebacking core. I mean, it was absolutely atrocious at points last year. I'd say, I'd again, say from like, here, like you said, with... Uh, the O line from from this from last year to this year very happy, but probably in yes. three years unhappy. Yeah, I, I especially yeah, I feel like that's about right. Especially you know you know just that three four, it it just wasn't working, and we definitely didn't have it for the talent. And you're definitely I was I think we we're both kind of frustrated even with it before with Mike Riley, just him not being able to implement it well. <laughs> yeah, and we just couldn't yeah. we couldn't field four good linebackers. It felt like though again just. Just to bash our captains, Colin Miller was not was our worst linebacker on the field. Right, as scary as the injury was, and like as sad as it was, and and, and the fact that he had to end up retiring from football early because of that. I mean, we saw that like, I mean, once Reimer came in, he he made plays and impacted the field immediately when he came in. He had like what a thirteen a twelve tackle game his yeah. first game as the starter, way better, and like looked really 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 good in this this core seems significantly better in pass coverage overall and really just spreading the field and you saw the effects that like more playing time for garrett nelson which we actually even tried some four three weird like three four down linemen playing a literal four three sometimes switching it up with uh yeah because he was so versatile like that and right and trying those things out so it was really interesting i felt like it gave us more flexibility and in the second half of the year with rhymers in there and garrett nelson playing more with honus and jojo i really liked our linebacking core and liked the progress we made and JoJo is a big part of that. I mean, his development and his abilities now have been just impressive. And it's it's and, so uh, sad that he's a senior. And and just again, just frustrating. Like, uh, yeah, JoJo, the lack of playing time he got early. Yeah, I mean, we we put him in this only Nickelback situations last year. Last year, and it's like you know they, they were like he makes mistakes, and yeah, but he also makes plays. He was the reason we were kept in that Ohio State Ohio State game, right? You know, the one year close because he was close, because he was aggressive, make plays, force fumbles, and just, yeah, just absolute force on the field. And look what he did yeah. in pass coverage. I mean, a call on oh Miller words, was so bad in, in, in pass yeah. coverage. And JoJo was a one player who was fast enough where we could put, yeah, on a slot guy, on a tight end. And you could feel confident, even like, you know, he, he passed, deflected that deep shot against Purdue, like it, which saved a touchdown. It, it, it our coaching staff didn't put this guy on the field the year before. It's it's right. stuff like that that's pretty frustrating. Yeah, agreed. And like again, the impact 
like immediately Reimers comes on the field and makes a massive impact. Like why? How'd you didn't see this in practice? Earlier? How did you not see this? Yeah. Yeah. So these are the things, I mean, again, it, those are the small questions that you get. You're just like, what is happening there? Again, we're putting a lot of weight in like the, into the, into the captain vote and uh, letting those guys play. And I understand that to an extent, but at the same time, your talent's got to play. And that's a big question. So overall, I'm going to go with a marginal yes, but there's hesitation there. I'll go with a marginal yes. That I'm, I'm, I'm content with the progress we've made so far. Caleb? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Considering that Rhymer's in like Garrett Nelson or Young. And you're or, hyped and, like, about that. And, I mean, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But so I would say with a marginal yes, because of that. Uh, uh, sure, I'll but yeah. I'll give I'll give it to us because I'm excited about the young guys. I'd say I'd say right. I can see the progression, but I also, s s yeah, Colin Miller, yeah, just a little frustrating. But I'll give it right. a yes. So going into secondary, obviously highlighted by some some fantastic plays from Cam Taylor Britt on the season and CTB. making some big time plays and then and and kind of icing that game against uh rutgers with the pick and overall just really really playing great obviously as a whole our secondary i think was pretty exciting in our development from what we thought we were going to be getting early on i think on the defensive side this is the far and away the the home run for yes you gotta be happy with what this, oh, this, yeah. this group has developed into obviously heading into next season there's going to be some question marks losing so many seniors in that secondary and losing Jojo in the pass protection as a whole and replacing them with like Braxton Clark coming off injury and Miles Farmer and, and the question marks there. But overall, um, with this season, I think you got to be happy with the development as a whole. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this team can continue to do with these guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, if uh, Deontay Williams and uh, Dismuke. and Dismuke both leave, I'll be sad. They were a ton of fun to watch this year. I just loved hitting people. I mean, it, it was just nice to have two safeties that just, I mean, they, they just didn't wanted, care, man. <laughs> yeah. They, they wanted, if you caught the ball, they were going to make you pay for it. And they were, yeah. they, they were going to make you earn yards in the secondary. And you know, that was just, it was nice to see they, they played, they put football. I feel like the right way. Um, and was there a little bit of head hunting? Yeah. But, uh, I love it. Yeah. I mean, we, get your we head just, up sometimes, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> please keep your head up sometimes. But they're scrappy, and they wanted to just to absolutely lay the smack, uh, right? Uh, every every time that the ball got caught. So yeah, I it, mean, the cons would be the ejections, the targeting calls that sure. were where our our secondary is is prone to hitting some All helmet, with helmet those. action. <laughs> but if if we're if we're bringing some intimidation factor and actually making some big time plays, I'll live with the penalties every so often, yeah. if if that's the trade off. So at the end of the day. I'm very happy with the secondary progress. I think you are Agreed. as well. Agreed. Uh, smash, a smash play. Yes, we are happy with the progress. So defensive line before we get into our last little bit here with the overall and stuff. D-line, interesting stuff. I mean, I think overall we improved again from last season, which is interesting considering that it's a much younger group. So as a whole, I think I'm pretty happy with the group considering how young they were this year besides Stilly, really. Yeah, Stilly Toyota really. had a tough job coming in this year. <laughs> he lost yeah. a lot of – I mean, we lost Daniels and – uh the twins the davis yep, twins the davis twins so you know that was, that was some big shoes to fill and he did a good job yeah. you know still still he had you know a, a pretty okay year uh but just a ton of you know again we've seen young talent uh but he it feels like he's really you know reloaded with ty robinson feldarius Payne. um you know younger daniels looked good yep. too at times yeah damien yeah yeah and it it's a uh, Again, that was a tough spot where I thought, man, we could be really weak in this area. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, they it's, been, put, it's, it's been interesting to see Caleb Tanner's development as like a defensive end, too, as well. And like how we, he's really kind of excited. I'm excited to see if Caleb Tanner turns into a defensive end officially next year, because that's definitely possible with how he was playing. So overall, I agree. I mean, I think as a whole, you got to be happy with it. Yeah, especially considering how many guys we lost going into this year and the question marks we had for the defensive line and uh, the defense as a whole. I mean, I think as any Nebraska fan looking as the defense as a whole, got to be happy with the progression we've seen from what we were expecting with his coaching staff and what they were doing at UCF and how they were getting shredded at UCF. For them to come here and, and play pretty well, the black shirts and the players that were, were here under Mike Riley and how bad the defense was under Mike Riley. To where we are now, you got to be at least pretty happy with, with the development of this team as a whole. So, last thing here, special teams. <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, kicking, kicking. Field goals. Connor Culp, well, great addition. Uh, yeah. Like, obviously, but you know, Big Ten kicker of the year, gold star. Yes, dude. But we take the take away that. 
and we go to kick <laughs> returns and punts punt, and punt, punt blocking. Oh my gosh, was that just so bad? We hired oh, a new so coach. Bad, we hired a new coach for this last year because it was it so help. bad and it continued to be so bad. So 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 what is the real issue here? Is it a Scott Frost philosophy? I mean, what is the, the problem? players? The, you know, are oh, we not playing enough? The camera there. Yeah, are we not playing <laughs> enough players? Like what on earth is happening? It is so bad and losing us games. Obviously, yeah. you look at the Rutgers game, they have a kick return for a touchdown that puts them back in it. And they had some other big kick returns as well. On yeah, the like field position as a whole, the muff, the punts, the the fake punt. Yeah, it's I terrible. Mean, multiple fake punts on us this year, and, and it yeah, looks like you can see it. We didn't even field eleven guys sometimes on the field, dude. It is so the bad. struggle's real, so horrible. I I mean, this is an F, an F, my an F minus. Like, <laughs> yeah, get. We need a new philosophy, a new ideology you always for special hear, teams. You, it is so you bad. You always hear the like, definition of a good program is good special teams. And like Urban Meyer, like preaches that on Big Ten Network all the yeah, time. He's on, like, on a teams uh, for the college teams football playoff when Tom good. Osborne was voting, they they said that Tom Osborne's takes on special teams were vital for the college football playoff to decide uh, the teams is because. Yeah, uh, Tom Osborne was so good at breaking down special teams and explaining which teams were good and which teams were bad. And let me tell you, he would have give ours an F, and he, I mean, <laughs> he'd probably he, we'd get a dang nabbit out of him because it was <laughs> yeah. so bad. Some so, vulgar words, yeah, from Tom Osborne, yeah, so, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so obviously F. a definite F. no. F. 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 Not happy with the progress here with the special teams, and this there it has to has to. Be improved if you want to win it has to improve yeah yeah if you want to yeah. win games i mean even the guys like cam taylor made mistakes on the special teams in the return game with the fumbles and i mean it's nothing was going right for us in that category as a whole this season Painful. it was terrible it looked it yeah. looked like we never prepared it once with our last handful of like last five to ten minutes here let's go into a big conversation about the overarching issues with coaching the overall direction of the program and then we'll get into the looking into next year and and the frost hot seat conversation specifically okay so now that we have a big picture understanding of where this team is at right now heading into the future so Caleb, where do you want to start here with some of the things that you that you really are just like worried about moving forward with this coaching staff and the things that you need you need to have ultra focus on and see massive improvement on in the upcoming 12 months if things are going to change for this team all right. Well, this is kind of tough to talk about because it's such a split controversial thing. But uh, the bowl game. Okay, was, we're starting out with the bowl game. All was, right, was here pretty, we go. It was pretty disappointing for me. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Because we've <laughs> no, heard. Not. we've. I, well, I mean, <laughs> I'll just call it disappointing. I'll just put okay. it there. Scott yeah. Frost has said multiple times, our team is young. It's not unexperienced. We and he's heard this quite a few also, times. Yeah. yeah, we I mean how much this practice year. we need, the lack how much of we need more practice, including him saying multiple times, you know, we've missed bowl practices the last few years. And here's an opportunity with your young team that lacks experience, you know, and we were fighting to get, you know, to play Chattanooga, right? And talk about a right. meaningless game. You know, I heard a lot of meaningless bowl games. No, it's not. You we could have probably played, you know, we had well, it's, it's as meaningful as the Chattanooga game. To yeah, say except the least. except I mean, you could have probably played Boise State or or, or Marshall good, or yeah, Army or, or we that we had options, you know, at Nebraska. Right. We, you know, two we and eight, two and eight South forces. Carolina got a ball. We we would have happily gotten a few choices, and yep. we could have played. Yep. I mean, again, just a, a great experience. None of these kids, like, I have seen a bowl game. I don't think. Right. None, none of our players on our team have seen a bowl game. And so except I for think your issue is that Frost, you know, and we said and we vote. also said at the beginning of the year, anytime, anywhere, any place, you know, we'll, we'll look for other options if we have to. Right. And here's this chance to play a bowl game when it's said. And I get the family stuff and just make it optional then because we need it. We needed these bowl game practices. Right. If, yeah. if so, Scott okay, Frost is preaching it, it, then. Yeah, we, we needed it. My, my, and we didn't the take weird the weird thing for me is that you know Frost leaves it up to a, a player vote, which again, I mean, clearly we're seniors, good at voting with our players because our captain choices. <laughs> that's player voted <laughs> too, and again, clearly Farniok, 
Colin Miller and Cade Warner. I mean, player voted. Uh, I mean, based off players. what we've. I mean, again, like the seniors. I mean, something's up. It's weird because, like, from what we're hearing from everything on Twitter and all the sources close to the team, everybody's leaving. It doesn't sound like these guys are coming back, even though they all had the option to. I mean, the coaches literally said that in the press conferences that they were going to be willing to, you know, talk to all the players about coming back. And it doesn't sound like any back. of them are coming. Maybe Diedrich, maybe. Seems like the only one that's still on the fence. Yeah, it looks it like, yeah, like, he had that, like, question mark. Maybe I'm coming back. Yeah. But most but of them, you know, they posted, like all of them were posting the pictures in the locker room, love all these like guys. last game, yeah. Yeah, and, and they posted that, too, before the bowl game choice. So it was pretty clear, I think, at that, that point. That they were going to vote that, no. That they didn't so want, they like, didn't want to play a bowl game, which is, right. again. So that's, so again, this is my thing. My issue is that if Frost, you know, it seems like all the seniors already don't want to play the bowl game. Okay, so don't have the seniors come to the bowl game pick your choice if we if we really had these options supposedly what we did then like pick a team that you feel like you have a chance to beat even with the seniors gone and play a pretty bad bowl but like it's going to be important practice for the young guys heading into next year a crucial season for scott Frost for your next year. job holy crap i mean you have won and four five and three as a head coach, I'm just shocked that you're willing to give up that practice when going into the season, I think most coaches were under the impression that this could, we could end up not, not starting the season until pretty late and then not even play this year and like literally continue to play this year up until like the end of December, early January. Yeah, this was the and time we were going to be playing like an anyway. Understanding going into the season before they had the first schedule come out that was and then uh, eliminated and everything else. But like early on, when we were fighting for football to be back, like, I think it was kind of understood that this was going to be a kind of drawn out season. And yeah. then we get to this point and we don't play football. I'm just really confused. It's mixed messages where we're saying one thing that we'll play whenever we'll do whatever we want practice. We want to get better. And then the team, and then one push comes to shove. Mode. Oh, it's meaningless. It doesn't matter. Let him go home. We'll let the team decide we see our family. But again, even the family argument, I mean, like I understand it. It's been a long time, but like, it, it was going to be at, at max 12 days. At max, at the least six. Like, it was, it could have been seven days. And they don't go back to school and, until January, like, 25th. That's, yeah, it's, it's that's, a like, that's, a, that's a long time. That's longer than, you know. So it's like, when they get back, that's longer than their Christmas break normally is anyway. So it, it, that's why it just doesn't really make sense to me. If you really love the game of football and you want to get better and you you are and you're trying to win games at Nebraska about next year, why wouldn't you vote to play this game? I get it. It's been a tough year. I understand that. I'm not the one playing these games. I think everybody. Time, I think everybody in the whole world understands though that 2020 has been a tough year. Right. You know, and it, it's not. It's not just. Voted, it's not just pinpointed to football. And, and I get and it for the players. There's plenty of teams out there that voted to play the game. So it's just a big. It's just a big weird question for me. Why Frost wasn't like, all right, that's fine. If you don't want to play, I totally understand. It's I'm not going to dock you for this at all. But the guys who want to play will field a roster of whoever wants to play the walk-ons. You're welcome. Well, let's go play football. And, and let's, let's go, go get better. Happen. And let's go get better. That's what I feel like Frost. That's the message that Frost should be preaching. It's just weird that that wasn't the case. I understand that you're trying to be here for the players. I totally get that. But I think there was a way to play this game still where you could still be there for the players. So anyway, we sued to play football this time. There are players that we have a lot football. more to talk to. We're already like 40 minutes of this video. We got we to gotta keep going. So, okay. Um, okay. Overall, the one question I have before we get into like looking into next year, I don't want it to come off as that we're totally just absolute haters of frost and want to see him fail like that's obviously not the case Clear, we don't want to see frost fail. clearly i think again i've said it if i've said it once said it a million times it would be the greatest thing if josh and i could just hop on the video say it, nebraska is amazing we high five we get to just or, celebrate every good play and that's the whole or video we were completely wrong and frost is literally the best and next year he comes out he goes 12 and 0 we win we were completely wrong we mm. win the national championship we thought that we were going to win six games or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'll say and, I'm wrong you know, all the time as I'm dancing yeah. because we're winning every game. Dancing, streaking at, down at, yeah, Cornhusker Highway. Exactly. And Josh and I just get to <laughs> just, we just every game just get to watch and just enjoy ourselves for four hours Putting of just 60 us points. beating the crap out of some team. Jeez, yep. that's the dream. I mean, I'm in. But yeah, it's just, it's just crazy that we haven't seen that progress yet. And so what we're going to get into now overall, I mean, you can bring up some of the other negatives and cons that you're worried about going into this conversation, but like, does Frost get fired if? That's the conversation we got to have now. So 
we got to look to next year and and how hot is frost seat objectively from a re- from a realistic like objectively okay, on is- the school it's low because you think we paid him a lot well i'll give it i'll give it three and a half it's very unlikely oh wow really it should be more likely i think because it's been okay. so disappointing interesting but i think it's i would unlikely. go a little bit higher than that okay. i mean i'll give I it a three like and a half you, out of ten corn the fact that scott frost is in this point right now is just the worst case scenario. again if he told me year three i was scared of the rutgers game I would have laughed in your face right. and said Scott and Frost and is the greatest staring, and we were winning the Big Ten Championship And that we're staring four. down a potential hot seat going into year four. Yeah, that, like, that is I am uh, crazy. I mean, we're already so wrong at this point. We felt so good about the Scott Frost. I mean, everybody did. I mean, who didn't? I mean, the yeah, whole world, the into, world, going, Vegas and everybody, right. you know, yeah. people who make so, money off this. Okay, so I'll, I'll say it's like it's a five, a five okay. hot scale. I wouldn't be opposed to saying six, but I'll go with five corn scale of hotness for his seat okay. right now. But let's go to the does Frost get fired if category here, playing the game. Does Scott get fri- fired if how many wins does it take for Scott to not get fired? Let's start with that. So we're looking at next year. We have some of the winnable games in, in our bracket. So at least in my opinion, the five games where we'll be favored next year is Illinois, Buffalo, Michigan State, Purdue, and Southeastern Louisiana. Ooh, I like Southeastern like, Louisiana. Can we have 10 of those? <laughs> then we're going to have like four like toss-up games. That might be kind with some of these. But <laughs> Northwestern, Minnesota, Iowa, and Michigan as 50-50 games. <laughs> we're going to give then, those 50-50? Is that that's yeah, what we're you know, Hey, okay. why not? And then three uh, tougher games with Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. But again, I mean, this year Wisconsin was worse than Iowa, so you could swap those around. Interesting. It's, it's a lenient scale here. So, does it, if he wins three, does Scott get fired? D- yeah, yeah. I think three. I think three so is so an easy three magic half... number of you're go- You're gone. I mean, that'd be okay, so that's your hotness wor- scale. That's worse. I mean, three, to a three, three. We will, we only won three this year, but in reality, right. you know, that's probably like four or five, depending on how our right. non-con games go. Right. I mean, with with southeastern louisiana on the schedule buffalo even though they are a competent team for sure the, look, inside they, the mac they're, 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 yeah, te- they're you're a little scared they're of them. a little they're teetering top they've been teetering top 25 for probably like the last three years so that yeah, one's no, a, they're little, a decent program that's a that's no gimme uh no for sure and then illinois they're gonna have a new head coach michigan state's in a wild situation right now purdue those games i think we have a decent chance to win I mean, we should win those five in my head, but like, yeah, not, we, not, who, yeah, nothing's a nothing's walk guaranteed. in the park at this point. No, no. Um, so if I give us four of those five, just to be kind, and then I give us two of the four flip we, oh, games, I don't I think there's six. any way. Do we, does he get fired if he has five wins? No. Does he get fired if he gets four wins? That's a real interesting one. I think. Yeah, I think he should get fired if he only wins five. I mean, at that point, it's like you've done this four years in a row. That you've yeah, shown me nothing, man. You know, man. But okay, that's yeah, that's a good question. So you, so I you think, believe, I think he should get five, fired at five, but I don't wow. think he will. Which man sucks because so badly for this to work. I love Scott Frost. I love everything about him, but like he's so the nice. Results at this point, there's nothing. Th- th- you have to at some point. You have to win. Evidence. At some point, you have to yeah. win. Yeah, I mean, you and again, this 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 fourth year, this is the fourth year where it's 100 percent your program. Now, this is your program. The fourth yeah. year is the definition of your program. You have to make, you have to have results. You do. I mean, and I that, felt we had to have I mean, some again, results this year. I mean, that Illinois game was so unacceptable yeah. on so right. many and levels. the Minnesota game and the Minnesota. I mean, 35 freaking people they hadn't played in two weeks. Because Multiple of COVID, starters. you know they hadn't practiced. They not only hadn't played, they hadn't practiced, and you yeah, and you can't do that. Practice. I mean, those two games were so inexcusable and just laughably painful. Uh, like it, it just those hurt so bad. I Josh right. and I were just in deep pain. We were. I mean, we didn't even text each other for a couple hours. We were just like, <laughs> we just needed time to to process, yeah. get over, yeah. talk rationally. I mean. Again, at the end of the day, what it's going to come down to is the quarterback play. I mean, the, the X factor for us in this team has been how good our quarterbacks play, whoever it is. If it's Luke McCaffrey, if it's Adrian Martinez, whoever's playing out there. I mean, the quarterback has to be legitimately good Which should, for us to win. It, I mean, and that does games. fall. It are, that 
it so easily falls on Scott Frost's shoulders because that's what he does. That I mean, he was a quarterback's coach. That's his whole thing. I'm in Verduzco. Yeah, that you know, again, that's that's their whole thing, and so that's worrisome. Again, like yeah, just I said, for sure. If that's the biggest problem, and that's also what we brought Scott Frost here for, that's very nerve wracking. Again, man, do we want to us to succeed? I mean, it's it's. Pay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, <laughs> we're giant Husker fans. We've been our whole lives. That's the biggest thing. So, okay, so you're at. That's interesting. So I would say I would want Scott Frost fired if we only win four for sure. Five is that's really depressing. I mean, that's really depressing. I mean, with this schedule, if, if you think, I mean, if you win five, and that's, that's where's again, the Illinois, where's the hope after that for the next year? I agree. You know, Illinois, it's just like Buffalo, how, Michigan State, Purdue, Southeastern. Louisiana. You know, if year four, you're not pro- you're, you're not probably, beating Iowa. You're not beating Iowa. You're not beating Wisconsin. You're probably you're not either or Northwestern. You're not either beating Northwestern or Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, or again, again, and, or you know, yeah, or Michigan. Right after four years, if you only win five games this year, after four years, you are currently still in the conversation with Illinois. And you're what? Ross? Five wins. I'm on the fence, but I would, man, I would lean fire, dude. I, I, I would, would too. I, it's fire. just like. Again, and that's just depressing. It's like how, how, how are you going to improve? We've won five games at your first year. I mean, even at six wins, I mean, six wins is beating Illinois, Buffalo, Michigan State, who's been terrible this year, Purdue, no Rondale Moore, terrible, so. and Southeastern Louisiana, and then one of Michigan, who is terrible, Minnesota, who is terrible, and then Iowa and Northwestern, who we should be competing with each year. And and that's not even touching the the you know competitive. And that's with a quarterback who you've had. That's with a quarterback who you've now had in your program for four years. And he still looks bad. Yeah, sophomores. uh, Offensive line still. Yeah, gonna be young. You're gonna have a Wandale who's gonna be very very talented. Who's in his junior year. And that defensive side that's gonna be young, unfortunately, because things don't line up well. But that's kind of football. Yeah, that's just how it is. I'm just looking at the schedule. I'm just staring at the schedule, and I don't know, man. Six wins would be really disappointing too. I it's not fire, but man, that would suck, and I don't know how. Six wins would be so deflating because I don't know if you can fire him just because it's like at that point it's money. It's unless you have an incredible coach lined up, how do you fire him? Yeah, you, you give him you then it's then it's literally one more year, win nine games, and or else you're fired. <laughs> like, yeah. Which again, you just <laughs> could you calculate seeing that happen under the circumstances? Yeah. Right. That's really tough. And so, I don't know, man. I mean, overall, we've gone on for 55 minutes. That's a lot of talk. I would say my my hard fire line is four. If we only win four games next year, how do you not fire him? Five games is depressing AF, and that's right on the fringe of, of firing. And then six is depressing, but I don't know if you can fire him. Uh, I'd say he, I'd he, say five. If you go six wins and then you win the bowl game, I'll be like, oh, I guess. <laughs> See for me, I think I I don't th- I don't see our pro- I don't see our program firing him at six, but I still don't see the hope. No, seven at least that means we beat all the teams we should and and then one other one, so I can see some progress. Right. Obviously, I'd love to be in the eight or nine range next year. Uh, eight, I'll be excited for the future again. I can at least be semi hopeful. I mean, again, we we. Yeah, I mean, at least we can say we're building something. And we've we, that's a, like an actual like we can see the improvement, and then oh, yeah. that's eight yeah. normal games, and then plus maybe the bulk game. Right. So overall, guys, I would obviously love to see your comments down below. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. This is our longest episode of all time by and far, and also probably our our definitely our, our most uh, controversial. Yeah, spiciest in quite a few years, and so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, like, comment, subscribe, drop all your comments down below. Share all your opinions, your controversial opinions down below. But as always, guys, I'm Josh. That is Caleb. And, guys, we'll be back next week with our the cornies. Uh, but as always, this is Backseat Sports, and we will see you next time. We out.